to the news segment shortly, but I'm sure you do know that the Independent Nigerian Electoral Commission had postponed the Nigerian elections last Saturday. It will happen on the 23rd of February uh, this month. Now, the uh, our representative out there, Komla Kluche, has been having a conversation with the UN Secretary General Special Rep of the uh, West Africa and Sahel, Dr. Ibn Chambers. Take a look at this conversation. We'll return with some more here on New Day. Elections uh, was postponed by the INEC uh, just a few hours into the elections. Reactions have come in from various quarters. Uh, not too much of a pleasant one, though, but the reality they've got to deal with is the fact that the elections will happen on February 23, where INEC has indicated that by then all logistical challenges will be addressed. Well, a joint statement has been released by uh, various observer missions, most especially the United Nations, ECOWAS, African Union, Union, the European Union, as well as other bodies, and the Commonwealth, most especially as well. Uh, all of them a bit disappointed, but they will stay to monitor the elections. We're joined by Ghana's very own Dr. Mohamed Ibn Chambas, who is the special representative of the United Nations Secretary General and head of the UN Office for West Africa and the Sahel. Doc, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Mm. Okay. I, am, I am very sure that this postponement of Nigeria's election has hit you probably in the belly. Um, one, are you disappointed about the disappointment? Um, are you disappointed about the postponement? Well, if, if I said that um, no, that obviously would not be the truth. At the same time, the United Nations, as uh, with the rest of the international community, uh, our posture has always been, how can we be most helpful to Nigeria as it seeks to conduct these elections? So under the circumstances, uh, our... Uh, uh, effort will not be to emphasize our disappointment, but rather to encourage the INEC uh, to do all it can to deliver the elections in a week's time, that is on the 23rd. And you can see from the statement that was issued by all of us trying to speak with one voice that uh, it was more of an encouragement to INEC. We know it's a huge task that it has on its hand. So we're encouraging it to make sure that whatever operational difficulties prevented it from holding the elections uh, yesterday, that is on the 16th, it should focus on tackling these operational challenges so that on the 23rd there will be no reason whatsoever to have to postpone the elections again. Doc, uh, do you think that the postponement of this election could affect the credibility of the process? I do not think so. To be frank, um, uh, UN in particular, we have been working with the INEC uh, for well over a year. Uh, we do not underestimate the huge task at hand. I mean, uh, to put it in a Ghanaian context, just imagine if the entire population of Ghana, the entire population, had to come out and vote two times in one day. That's the scale of uh, the operation that uh, one is dealing with. I mean, 84 million registered voters. And when you take into account that a good portion of the material are not locally manufactured, then bringing these in and making sure that they are available at all 126,000 polling points, polling stations, then uh, it's quite a task. So if for one reason or the other, just for purely logistical, I mean, as long as we are all clear, and it is the case here, that it was not politically motivated, but purely logistically and operationally not possible to do the elections, then let's focus on ensuring that come the 23rd, the whole uh, operation will run smoothly and that Nigerians will be able to come out in their numbers and to cast their votes. What signals or uh, feedback are you getting from your monitoring uh, team uh, with regards to the political parties and the players relative uh, 
uh, to the postponement? Well, I mean, we have uh, contact with the political parties, the leadership of the po political parties, and also they have actually expressed themselves. Uh, uh, on the one hand, they've all expressed uh, disappointment. They have been uh, exposed to huge financial outlays. Uh, many of them had to send. I mean, by the time the elections were cancelled, they had already deployed their agents. And you can imagine that for the two leading parties, the APC and the PDP, that they had deployed to all 126,000. That's a lot of expenditure uh, that they have incurred. So they're disappointed. We're, however, also pleased about their understanding of the situation and their willingness to cooperate with the INEC and to give it the opportunity to get it right this time around. So uh, our message to the political parties has been on the first hand to commend them for this disposition and to encourage them to continue to play by the rules and to allow the process to roll on uh, smoothly so that on 23rd of uh, February, the elections can be held with their uh, cooperation, of course. Uh, I, was, I was reading your report this morning, uh, your 2017 report to the General Assembly on uh, the general security situation in Nigeria. You expressed your disappointment about the Boko Haram insurgency and all of that. With regards to the elections, are you generally satisfied with the security arrangement? Yes, there are two or three areas in which UN has uh, placed particular uh, interest or attention. One has been in the Northeast as a whole because of the activities of Boko Haram. Uh, but secondly, we know that there are other hotspots in Nigeria where there have been security challenges, such as in the Middle Belt, where there have been farmer header conflicts which have resulted in a lot of death and destruction, displacements. Um, so we've, and then, of course, in Southern Kaduna uh, State, uh, so UN has in, indeed uh, been involved in these states uh, in the Northeast as a whole to ensure that uh, the security arrangements are adequate, that I INEC is uh, capable of conducting elections there. And frankly, up to now, we have uh, nothing to make us uh, feel otherwise. As the security arrangements have been uh, adequate and we were confident that yesterday that is on the 16th of February, elections could have been held. So certainly in a week's time, uh, we expect the same security dispensation to be provided um, in the Northeast, in the Middle Belt, in places uh, such as uh, Southern Kaduna and other hotspots to allow the elections to be held. Our other concern has been with the IDPs. There's so many internally displaced persons uh, from these conflicts, and we have an interest to be sure that they are not disenfranchised, that they are able to vote. And there again, I should commend uh, INEC. They have put in place very good uh, arrangements to ensure this. Also with the disabled, uh, there's so many categories of uh, the physically challenged uh, persons. And um, again, we have engaged INEC, and INEC has put in place adequate arrangements to ensure that no Nigerian is uh, disallowed from participating in the election because of a physical uh, challenge that they may have. Whilst talking about security arrangements and all of that, um, I'm quite sure that your monitoring team might have picked up early warning signals as well. Uh, what warning signals, early warning signals, um, has your team picked up uh, which is likely to breach uh, the peace of the process? Well, there are a number of states in Nigeria which historically have been known to be hotspots, uh, either because of religious cleavages, uh, very intense uh, interpersonal political rivalries, uh, or uh, just uh, ethnic and, and uh, regional divides. Uh, and so um, it's prudent to focus on these and to uh, work to prevent or preempt conflict. And that's why we very much 
uh, comment, the work of the National Peace Council, the National Peace, in fact, in Nigeria is called the National Peace Committee, chaired by General Absalam Abubakar. I've personally worked very closely with him. Uh, we, uh, of course, supported his initiative to have the signing. Uh, two signings were done by presidential candidates. At the beginning of the campaigns, there was a signing ceremony. The president, former president Atiku, the president Buhari, all the candidates signed to conduct peaceful campaigns. And indeed, that was the case. During the campaign period, we didn't witness any untoward events in the hotspots. Uh, then secondly, there was uh, another signing ceremony to uh, pledge to accept the results of the elections. And again, that was an occasion on which President Buhari and former Vice President Atiku Abubakar made public declarations to, to, to ensure that the elections, their, their supporters will behave properly and allow the elections to hold and that at the end of the process, they would both uh, accept the results. Now, which are the hotspots uh, that are generally known? I mean, uh, River State has always had a tendency to political violence during elections. Kanu, uh, Lagos, Kaduna, uh, Benue State, and uh, this time around, Kwara State. So the UN has, in fact, uh, deployed persons there uh, to monitor the process and to see what efforts can be made to ensure that local capacities to mediate are also strengthened. I have personally visited most of these states and participated in state level election peace conferences, uh, which brought together stakeholders from a uh, wide spectrum uh, of interest, uh, women, youth, uh, of course, with the Electoral Commission, with security agencies, with the governors, you know, so high level uh, participation to preach peace, the need for peaceful elections. And we always remind Nigerians that elections in Nigeria are more than about just Nigeria. Because of the weight of the country in our region and in Africa, I mean, if elections go well and Nigeria is stable and prosperous, the whole region is uh, benefit to that. On the other hand, if out of elections we have violence and a political crisis, uh, the consequences will similarly be felt by the region, uh, that is West Africa and indeed Africa. So that's why uh, it is of uh, concern. You, you refer to uh, the report that I did, uh, the Secretary General, uh, uh, to the uh, Security Council of the United Nations. In that report, it's emphasized that we all should work together, the entire international community, to support Nigeria to ensure that these elections are peaceful and are credible and that at the end of the day, Nigeria will come out stable and, and strong because uh, that will be to the benefit uh, of all of us. Uh, Doc, we are almost uh, wrapping up, though. You have indicated that, well, they've all uh, signed the peace accord, all, which all the political parties have signed the peace accord. But what is uh, your expectation of the various political actors uh, uh, before, during, and after the elections? What is the sort of commitment you are expecting from them before, during, and after the elections? Not just because they have signed an accord. It's a different thing signing an accord on a paper, but it's a different thing as well with respect to attitude on the ground. Mm -hmm. You know, people have to act responsibly. And when you are a leader of a party and you're running, and mind you, I mean, this is an election in which there are 73 presidential candidates. Incidentally, one of, in my view, contributory factor to the fact that um, they couldn't uh, hold the elections on time. I mean, the number of candidates and the ballot paper and the number of papers that had to be printed was just humongous. But uh, each person who is putting themselves up for leadership of this country, that is Nigeria, and 
uh, leadership of, they want to be senators, they want to be members of House of Representatives, uh, they want to be governors, have a responsibility also as leaders to behave in a certain way. And that includes uh, behaving in a manner that uh, leads to peaceful coexistence of Nigerian communities.